You're gonna stay there? Oh, you're gonna be open. Thank you. I'll let you have the sunny spot in a minute. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Bryony and I'm one half of Indecisive Readers. You may be wondering why I have a circlet. I also have uh, my boobs in the bright spot, a shirt that says girl power. And you may be wondering why, but as I get into the video, hopefully it will make a bit more sense. Today I'm here to do my March TBR. I do not usually post TBRs, but there are a lot of read-alongs going on in March. And at least one of them requires you post a TBR. So as I have come up with a TBR, which I don't usually do for March, I thought, why not post it? When I come up with a TBR, I usually come up with about twice as many books as I might choose, mostly because I'm a bit of a mood reader, but kind of like knowing what I'm choosing between. <laughs> um, so I've got a few books to choose between and I'm just going to go through them, go through the prompts and the read alongs that they match for. And yeah, hopefully the whole setup will make sense soon. Before I go through the books I'm reading for read-alongs, I'm just going to quickly go through the books I'm reading because I want to or because they're, because they're library books or other reasons. The first two I had to finish were ones I'd started in February but didn't quite finish in time, the first of which was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was on loan from the library as an audiobook. I have now finished it but yeah, I didn't quite finish it in February. The second was The Five by Hallie Rubenhold, which was mine, but again, didn't finish it in time. Didn't honestly think I was gonna finish it in February anyway, but it's now finished. I have two books I will be reading before the read-alongs start, and also they don't fit into the read-alongs. The first of which is This Lovely City by Louise Hare. This is an arc, so that's why you can't really see what it's called, but this is about London, post Windrush so when all like Jamaican people are living in London when there's a lot of racism so black people are still getting the blame for a lot of things. Something happens early on in the book and the main characters or the main narrators kind of get drawn into it not on purpose but they get the blame because they're black and I'm about halfway through now and it's really good, I'm really enjoying it, but yeah, I'm reading this because it comes out on the 12th of March, so would like to be able to review it before that. The second book I need to read is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. Um, this is also on loan from the library as an audiobook. Sorry, am I set on your tail? Yeah, this is also on loan from the library as an audio... This is also on loan from the library as an audiobook. Oh. Hang on, I'm coming back. This is also on loan from the library as an audiobook. Um, if you don't know what it's about, it's about the Prince of Wales called Henry falling in love with the president's son called Alex but they start as rivals, like political rivals, but then something happens. I'm sorry about all the cat hair flying around. I live in a house with three cats and it's just everywhere. But Henry and Alex are like political rivals, but have to kind of fake a friendship because they can't be fighting because they are like the children of big political parties. So can't be doing that. And then obviously they fall in love. I'm about a third of the way through undecided at the moment. I feel like it's either going to go one or the other way because that's where most people stand on the issue. Very few people have been in the middle. Most people seem to love it but when people hate it they really hate it. So let's see where that goes. In terms of the read-alongs, the first read-along I will be joining in with is International Women's Day read-along. I can't remember the hashtag. We'll put it down below. We'll put the links to all the hashtags and all the hosts in the description because I don't know any of them off the top of my head. But yeah, the first read-along I will be joining in with is International Women's Day read-along. This has no prompts other than to read books that are feminist. 
The first book I will be reading or starting for this is A History of the World with the Women Put Back In by Kirsten Looker. Yeah. By Kirsten Looker and Ut Deschnell. This is, as described on the title, it's A History of the World with the Women Put Back In. Are you going on that side? Um, she's really throwing me off the shot. Um, yeah, this is about it's like a non fiction book about the world but giving women a voice. I really want to read more books in this kind of subject, and so this will be useful to start because it's quite like a dense book. The writing's not huge, there's a lot of writing, it's like a bigger book than normal. So, I'm I'm gonna start it this month and kind of slowly read it like be in no rush to read it because I want to enjoy it and so I don't want to rush through it. The second book on my TBR for International Women's Day is What Magic Is This by Holly Bourne. This again is a library book it's by Barrington Stoke who are a publisher that focus on making books that are like dyslexic friendly or additional needs friendly so I think the text might be different but basically it's about three friends three friends and the fourth one they're trying to make the fourth one happier just being friendly and believing that they're witches so i think this will be a really good one to read for international women's day because it focuses on like friendship rather than romance or anything and so i think that'll be quite nice and holly Bourne is just great so Looking forward to adding this to like my repertoire of Holly Bourne books I've read. Because the International Women's Day read along is only like a day long, I don't expect to finish both books. I'm hoping to finish this one, but I'm not expecting to finish both. But it's a Sunday, so I might be able to find time. Plus this is only 160 pages long. Like I should be able to finish it in time. Also starting on the 9th of March but carrying on over to the 15th is the Femme Fantale Readathon. Can you not eat that? Which is a readathon that encourages you to read fantasy books by women. Are you crying? Why are you crying? What have you done? You put yourself in the eye. Oh, thank you girl. I need my book for this bit. This is a readathon that has 12 prompts on like a bingo board. You don't have to finish all of them. There's no prize if you do, but I have chosen many books that will cover all the prompts. She just clawed my leg. I did write them down, but someone's just decided to lay on them. That's not comfortable at all. I can see your leg sticking out. Right, there you go. Okay, this will test my memory. There are four books I need to read to complete all the prompts. I don't expect to, but if I do, that's great. And they are these four. I am just going to talk through them all to make sense of them. But yeah, they're the four I have to read to do all the prompts. The one that ticks off the most prompts is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. This is also the Myth Take Reads group choice for... She's dribbled on my book. And how have you dribbled on my book? You don't dribble. I've got a notebook down there, which is what she's laying on, which is why I'm saying I have to test my memory because I can't see it. But it's pencil on one side and it had some fountain pen on the other and she's dribbled on it so much that the fountain pen has now come through. That's clever. Can we not do it on my books now? Should we lay down like a normal cat? This is the Myth Take Reads group pick for February and March. I obviously didn't finish it in February, so I'm gonna prioritize reading it now, which is why I'm squeezing it into like one of the earlier read-alongs. This is a retelling of Arthurian legends, I think. So the first one it ticks off is retelling and also a historical setting, because obviously it's set in the past, which, or set in Camelot, which is in the past. This is also a new to you author, a woman with a weapon, which is about a woman that uses a weapon. And I just assume that there is a woman in a, with a weapon in here. Book in a series, YA and 
a non-human protagonist because Guinevere in this is Fae, so not quite human. Next on my TBR is The Frog Princess by E.D. Baker. This is the book that The Princess and the Frog is based on, but where the princess and the frog has a normal person kissing a prince? No, kissing? I haven't watched it. Some kissing of frogs, and I don't think she's a princess. The girl in this is a princess, but she's just really clumsy, and to escape her, like, arranged marriage, she kisses a frog. I think this is one I read when I was younger, but I can't remember it. And I was just thinking of it the other week and then I saw it for cheap, so I thought, why not buy it? This would cross off middle grade, book in a series and non-human protagonist because obviously she is a frog for at least part of the book. I need this book to tick off the middle grade prompt. Next on my list is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrove. This is a retelling of a non-fiction event or not necessarily a retelling but kind of a filling of the gaps so there was a storm in Vardur in Norway in 1617 and then in 1621 there were witch trials in the same town because basically the women were surviving on their own without men and this is kind of like filling that gap between the storm and the witch trials. I'm really looking forward to reading it I went to see Karen Millwood Hargrave talk at an event last week. I think it was last week, it seems so long ago. Went to see her talk at an event last week and it's really interesting. Made me more excited to read it. And this will be covering queer, retelling, standalone, historical setting and adult. I really need it for standalone, adult and queer. The final book I need to get through for filling all the prompts is Daughters of Henri by René K. Ameo. This is about two sisters who were separated at birth but are the last remaining like remnants of the gods and I think they need to join forces to defeat Henri maybe? Can't remember. But it sounds amazing. I've been looking forward to reading it for ages. This is obviously by a BAME author. It's also YA. I'm gonna assume women with a weapon because they look quite fierce and it's new to you author. Super excited to read this. I think this may be like my most exciting one I'm looking forward to. Also going on that week is the backlist readathon which is to read books which focuses on reading books that are on your backlist so ones that were published pre-2020 so 2019 backwards. I'm going to try and squeeze the books from here also onto that. So the first prompt is shortest book on TBR and that is obviously The Frog Princess. The next one is a book that intimidates you and that is for sure A History of the World with the Women put back in because it's non-fiction and just non-fiction scares me. This is also blue on the cover which is another prompt. Another one is Diverse and a book you're excited to read so I'm obviously going to use Daughters of Henri for this. And the final one I'm going to talk about is something recommended and I'm going to lead into another one I haven't yet spoken about and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I had this on audiobook so once I've finished with Red, White and Royal Blue I will pick that up, not necessarily rush through it because it's not a library one so I can take my time with it but I quite like having an audiobook on the go so I will be starting that this week as well because it is a female fantasy book so it would cover a lot of the prompts as well, like historical setting, YA, book in a series. Is she a non-human? I think she's just got clairvoyant occult abilities. Um, maybe women with a weapon? I don't really know a lot, but I just know that a lot of people recommend it and therefore I will use it for something recommended. The final read along in March happens in the last weekend, which I think is the 29th to the 30th. If that's wrong, I'll put the right date underneath. But that's the Royal Weekend, Bookie Trials Royal Weekender or something. And this is like a weekend long Royal Bookie Trials. I can't think what it's called now. Um, Book Junkie Trials. It's the weekend long version of that. So there are eight prompts that you can cover but four of them are team specific and four are for everyone. The first one for everyone is just complete a book. 
the others I think I don't know I didn't make note of them I assume the ones I'm going to include may cover it but I am team outlaw I was team outlaw last time I haven't really investigated the other ones so the ones I'm going to answer for will answer the outlaw ones I somehow couldn't squeeze just one book onto this DBR I couldn't even squeeze just two we have three nice color scheme actually matches my lamp and my wall we have three and a potential fourth if I could finish it there is about a week and a half between the end of the Femme Fantale and the backlist read along and this so what I don't finish in that week I will be trying to squeeze into the next week before this one but I don't know how many I'll finish because last month I think I finished five six seven six or seven if you include the five and Daisy Jones and the six but then the month before I finished 16 but that's also because I read like nine graphic novels so I don't know how this month's gonna go in terms of the Royal Weekender the first prompt is to read a book with trees or nature or mud on the front cover and I have chosen Ash by Melinda Lowe there are some trees on it I think this is a retelling of Cinderella she's got like glass slippers but I think it might be queer maybe I brought this ages ago don't think I ever finished it don't have a bookmark in it that tells me where I was so maybe I did finish it but it's been on my TBR for ages I've been meaning to read it for so long so it would be good if I could cross it off with this read along the next prompt is to read a book with multiple point of views and the book I'm using for it isn't the one I'm about to hold up but this is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa I will be reading the sequel which is Soul of the Sword and I have that as an ebook from NetGalley so I read this last month and will be reading the sequel but this one is based on Japanese folklore and an ancient dragon scroll that will grant the wielder any wish they want but it has been split up over years because obviously that has been abused one character is trying to protect the dragon scroll someone else is trying to collect them all for someone else and the first book ended on I don't want to say cliffhanger but the first book ended on a change of character so I really hope the sequel does have multiple point of views because one of the point of views in this one has presumably changed so I don't know how that's going to work I'm just keeping my fingers crossed it's multiple point of view because that will answer the prompt for me the last prompt I have to do for the team is to reread a favorite which is always great I can always reread favorites and the one I have chosen for that one is Catch and Fire by Suzanne Collins this is the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy which if you don't know what it's about is about children going into an arena and killing each other. Katniss, the main character, survived the first round and this is following her as she kind of relives the PTSD from the first one and readjusts into her new life and other things that spiral out from that. This is my favourite one in the series the hunger games is one of my favorite series anyway but yeah this is my favorite one in the series this is my really old copy which can you hear that basically my mum dropped it in the bath many years ago when the films were coming out and we were all racing to read the books she dropped it in the bath which is why it's like all creased along here and she got me a new copy but apparently i decided to keep the battered old one presumably because I felt bad that no one would want this one in a charity shop so I probably got rid of the other one thinking there's no point having two so yeah I have this this is also being read for the Hunger Games read long because these prequel is coming out in May so there is a read long being hosted for the books which go over like one a month I read the Hunger Games a month early but also like towards the end of the month so it didn't matter quite so much but yeah Catch and Fire is being read in March so I'm gonna squeeze that in as well. The final book of course I may talk about is Physic by Angie Sage. This is the third book in the Septimus Heap series which is my favourite childhood series and it's about a boy wizard who 
is lost to his family for the first 10 years and he gets I can't say he gets reunited because that's a spoiler but it's also about princesses and magic and wizards and oh, I just love this I'm rereading these books in preparation for the seventh one which came out like five years ago probably more but I've just never read because if you read the final book it means it's over and I just never wanted to commit to that but I do want to read it now and so I'm gonna be brave and reread them. I started rereading them last year but just kind of stopped. I ran out of time or just had other things to read. So I put this on my TBR as well just in case, just in case I have some time. I mean this would cover so many prompts. Cover books you're excited to read for Backlist Readathon, it would cover historical setting, book in a series, middle grade, woman with a weapon I'm pretty sure. Jenna uses a weapon I think this is one of my favorite ones in the series as well like because she not only is it kind of set in the past because it's castles and princesses and stuff but she then goes back like 400 or 500 years to Queen Ethelred Ethelredder and it's got alchemists oh I'm, you know what actually I'm really excited to read this I hope I can squeeze it in and if I can't squeeze it in this month I think I'm gonna squeeze it next month because I just love this book. When I think about it, I think it's just, it's one of my favourites. What I failed to mention actually was what I was wearing this, but basically when I got the first book in this series, I fell in love with Jenna. She was my absolute favourite character. You know how some people wanted to be Hermione, which I did also want to be. I also wanted to be Jenna because I love princesses and she was amazing and she didn't do any magic or anything, but she was like the Ginny of this world where she grew up surrounded by boys so was just as fierce and courageous and amazing as Ginny and I just loved her I always dress up as her I've got like loads of pictures of me dressing up I used to draw pictures because each chapter has like a drawing at the front I always used to recreate these drawings either myself and there was lots of ones of Jenna which apparently I'm not going to find now off the top of my head there she is. There's my Jenna. Anyway, so I used to dress up as her, and as you can see, she had a circlet. So basically, yeah, I brought this circlet because I wanted to be Jenna. As I was putting it away, I was like, why do I have circlets? And I was like, yes. So yeah, this is my, like, 11-year-old self manifesting itself in a booktube video. <laughs> so yeah, that's my TBR for... March it is insane I will not finish all of these but I just thought I'd put them up just in case I managed to of course there are also two books I've already read this month one that's on the floor that I forgot to pick up two audiobooks I'm I'm just going mad so yeah Thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you're not already. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you're planning on joining in, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!